Welcome back. This is video number four. By now, you, we have set all of our tie points. Scale 1.1, .1, scale 1.2, scale 2.1, scale 2.2. And we've also set manual tie points to GCP 5, 1, 4, 3, 2, 7, and 8. Once we had these tie points, we went in and we created scale constraints and we scaled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Basically, scaling uh, in scale one, scale 1.1 1 .1 to 0 0.2, scale 2.1 to scale 2.2, .2, and we also did various GCPs GCP 5 to 1, 1 to 4, 4 to 3. Uh, 2 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 5, etc. Each time we tried uh, to do a minimum of 10 when we were doing these, and we created the scales. We did process reoptimize, and then we ran the point cloud mesh in the ortho mosaic. These are now done, and you should have done them between video 3. You should have rerun point cloud mesh and the DSM between the two. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and take away the processing. For what we're going to do now, we don't, we're not doing any more selections, so I'm going to try to create this in a way that it's well zoomed in. I'm going to turn off the cameras and the rays for a second. You can see all of our constraints are still showing. The easiest way to get rid of those is to just turn them off. Turn off the GCPs, turn off those. Uh, and then let's look at the triangle mesh. So you can see down at the bottom, it is... Uh, loading that triangle mesh, which should make this an almost image-like picture. You can even see the old red fencing here that someday we'll get rid of. Uh, you can see this. Uh, there are some distortions still in the video, you can see. But why did we do the scale constraint? What was the point of that? The point of that, once we have these set, uh, is that we can take measurements. Let's say that this car was parked, and this car had come up here, and let's assume for a second in an accident, although this is a simulated accident, so it isn't here, there would be skid marks here. Now, one of the things uh, someone may need to know is what is the distance between skid marks? So you can literally make measurements as you're going along. You can say, okay, and we'll pull this back over. All right, let's say there was a skid mark on the ground. We could left click on it, left click again, then right click, and we would know that that skid mark was 9.82 uh, feet. All right. And we know that it's accurate now because we're not relying on the drone, but we're relying on the manual work we did in setting our tie points and then setting our scale constraints. Once we re optimize and reset, we know these things. We can measure the length of the car. We know it's 100% accurate, or at least it's going to be pretty accurate down to the one inch, or probably in our case, below an inch, a quarter inch uh, level of accuracy. Uh, you'll remember um, when we were redoing them, we were about, about a quarter of an inch off with just the drone. So we fixed that. So we know our accuracy level is pretty high. If we needed to measure between, um, you know, the car, we could do that measurement, right click, and now we would know that's 2.35 feet. We would be able to measure anything at the accident scene ex post facto or after the fact. And here's why this is important. In reconstructing the accident, the private investigator, the law enforcement, uh, whomever it is, will need to be able to make measurements after they leave the scene. Uh, and this is what usually takes a tremendous amount of time at an accident scene. So when you're sitting on Route 80 or 78 going, when is this traffic finally going to go? It's because someone's doing this with a handheld camera. They're taking pictures, they're taking measurements, and then they're going back to the office and processing. Now, as you know, with the drones, this is a four minute flight that can be uploaded to the cloud. Even if you wanted to do that, you know, we usually turn that off uh, in, in class and someone back at the office could be doing this instantly. You can make 3D models from this photogrammetry, taking out the right things. You could put it in GIS software. You could put it into a video. You could make a video using just this button and fly around the accident scene. There's so many things you can do with PIX4D and photogrammetry to make the job of law enforcement better. That, <coughs> excuse me, that's the purpose 
of setting scale constraints. It's to take the images, create automatically the photogrammatic uh, outputs, and we do the scale constraints to make it 100% accurate so that we, if we were testifying before a jury um, or if we were giving a deposition or we were answering questions for law enforcement, we wouldn't need uh, to um, guess. We would actually be able to say with great confidence. And in fact, if we were in the lab, uh, we would run and I would take you through a statistical modeling where I would show you that once you've done this scale constraints, there you are literally um, st there's no statistically significant difference between this scaling what we just did or what's known as the poor man's model, or between a PPK or an RTK drone, which would be by definition much more accurate. Okay, so your RTK phantom will be accurate to the two centimeter level. This scaling will make you accurate uh, to that level as well. The difference, of course, is probably somewhere in the area of about $10,000. That's the difference in investment here. Um, you can do this for probably buy everything there and get, you could do this with a, um, a the original Mavic, which I think you can get now for probably around $400 to $500, plus those ground control points that you can get for 60 bucks and two tape measures, let's add 20. So basically for about 700 bucks, you can do the exact same work that someone with a $10,000 drone is going to do. All you have to do is follow the steps in these four videos that I've given you. Okay, that ends our scaling explanation in the video. Now I'm going to give you what your, what is my, what is your, my final thing that I have to give uh, to the president. Let's go ahead and turn these poly lines off. Um, let's turn the rest of these. It automatically creates manual tie points when you do those measurements and you can turn them off. You can delete them very easily too. You just click on it when it's dark like that. You hit delete, 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 delete. And in fact, I can get rid of uh, anything I want. You'll notice that it also got rid of the lines because if there's no points, there's no lines. So let's go. Here's your homework. Once you've done all that, you've scaled it, you've re-optimized, you've reprocessed. Now you have to give me something so that I can give you a final grade for. So it's going to be a pretty simple thing you're going to give me. You're going to go right into the mosaic editor. This will take a few seconds to load, uh, longer or shorter, depending on your CPU ability. And we're loading all the different Um, mosaic so we're going to get we should have a ortho a dsm and a dtm okay so here's your ortho mosaic we know this is scaled here's what you're going to do you're going to go into the mosaic editor you're going to come here you're going to take a screenshot you can do it with a software and get an image you can do it with your iphone you can do it with a cell phone whatever you need to do get me an image of your ortho mosaic that's going to look like this and go right up here, give me your DSM. Let me see the DSM and that you calculated your digital surface model. And I'm looking for these after you've done the re-optimization from these videos. Once you do this, screenshot. Then you're going to do the DTM um, portion here. And this is all I'm going to want to see. Digital terrain model. We know we can go in from what we've done before. Um, and do planar versus ortho and reset this. I'm not interested in all that. All I want to see is that you actually generated the DTM. So I need a screenshot of the mosaic, a screenshot of the DSM, and a screenshot of the DTM. You can send this to me any number of ways, but I'm looking for three pictures. You're going to email them back to me at will at warren.edu. That's W-I-L-L at warren, W-A-R-R-E-N, dot E-D-U. Those three will complete your assignments for this course. Um, I hope it's been beneficial to you. I know with the, uh, th that we've gone through a lot to get to this point, and it's at times been a learning process for all of us. But hopefully here we're at the end, and this will finish out the course. So that's the end of what we're going to do. You have these videos. Uh, if you get confused or lost, go back to video one and start over. Watch the video. If it doesn't work out for you, you missed a step. 
you didn't pay attention to the video, go back and watch the video again. I've walked you through everything, um, with the exception of setting a couple of those manual tie points between videos or processing between videos. But by this point in the course with the two manuals we've gone through, you should be pretty comfortable with that. Uh, I hope this has uh, been beneficial to you. I'll also remind you that you can also always do volumes. Uh, so you have the dirt pile here. Once you've created this, you've re-optimized, you have some really accurate information you can use. Thank you very much, and I hope you had a wonderful semester.